Good Wednesday morning. Today we begin our final session answering the question, who is the Holy Spirit? When we meet tonight, we're going to learn about how the Holy Spirit equips, and we'll be looking at the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. What stands out to me in this story is that a very unlikely candidate for being converted to Christ is found and converted to Christ through supernatural leading, not through human planning. Philip received this supernatural guidance one step at a time. In verse 29, the Spirit says, go up and join the chariot. That's all he says. Not what for, not who's in the chariot. Just go to the chariot. The timing of the Holy Spirit proves perfect. At that very moment, Philip, no doubt wondering what he would do or say when he got to the chariot, here's the Ethiopian reading, a very familiar passage of the book of Isaiah. Philip knew what the Lord was doing in directing him to this desolate place where there is one lone chariot and a man from Ethiopia. The Lord is having mercy on a man whose nationality and sexual impotence might have left him thinking, the God of Israel would never come to me. And not only that, the Lord is orchestrating the evangelization of an entire country. Philip proclaimed the good news of Jesus to him, that the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all, and that we are set right with God through his death and resurrection. The Ethiopian believed and was baptized and went on his way rejoicing. So what's the point of the story? Why does God include this story in the book of Acts? What does he want us to get out of it? I think the answer is that the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch teaches us one of the ways God uses to evangelize the world. I say one of the ways because it's clear from the book of Acts that a lot of evangelism was done without an angel of the Lord having to tell the Christian what to do. It's, it's what you do if you love Jesus and you love people. You tell them the good news. Jesus already gave us a command about that. We call it the Great Commission. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. So you don't have to have an angel of the Lord to tell you to do it. We should just do it. But on the other hand, we may be more in danger of making the other mistake, swinging the pendulum the other direction, namely thinking that we can do all God wants done by simply evangelizing according to our strategic plan. So God includes here in the book of Acts stories and teachings that equip us for another kind of good work, not just wise and strategic planning on the basis of what we can see, but also listening responsively to the Holy Spirit when he may want to tell us to do something that we might never have thought of doing, like going down to a desert road that leads to Gaza and wait for further instructions. Philip could not have computed from scripture and circumstance that that's where the spirit was moving next. So the scriptures are wonderfully alive. They protect us from the error of thinking that the only way God guides us is through strategic planning. And they show us that there are works God may lead us to do by means of supernatural intervention. God has many more wonders to show us in the work of evangelism than we can imagine. So let's pray that our eyes can see and our ears can hear when he calls us to a divine appointment like Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch had on the road to Gaza. Lord, forgive me for the times I have been so fixated on a methodology that I completely failed to hear your voice of instruction. Guide me today to lost souls that I could never have planned to share you with, I pray in your holy name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you here tomorrow. Hope to see you here tonight.